Coming up in a few minutes, a meme that was helpful. Helpful? Oh, I can't wait to find out how it helped you. You're supposed to lead, Brian. I'm leading by example and (laughs) letting you go first. Okay. We're going to start a discussion that's going to spill over into Brian Janelle Overtime. Mm -hmm. Uh, A really thoughtful, it's hard to believe, thoughtful meme. What? (laughs) Usually there's a lot of thought put into them to make them as insulting as possible to the people you don't agree with. And here's the question on the meme. What's the hardest for you to say? Is it, number one, I love you. Number two, I was wrong and I'm sorry. Number three, I need help. Number four, I appreciate you. Or number five, which of these is the hardest for you to say? I've already answered this for Janelle. Oh my goodness. I have. What? We'll you share do that in not an hour. know me that well. We've only known each other for like, what, four years? Five years? I know it's Barely? I, trust me. We'll figure out Janelle's and yours <laughs> coming up. <laughs> You know what we're about to do? We're about to get real. We're about to have conversations that Christians have behind closed doors. The scary ones. The ones that make you feel uncomfortable. That's where we're going. Why? Because we're family. Ustedes son mi familia. So this is the Brian and Janelle podcast. She's Janelle and I'm Brian. If you don't want to miss anything, all you have to do is just hit that subscribe button to get a notification whenever we drop a new episode. This is the Brian and Janelle podcast. So we're sharing this meme on our Facebook page, and we're going to talk about it at 9.05 on Brian and Janelle Overtime. And it asks this question, which phrase is the hardest for you to say? I love you. I was wrong and I'm sorry. I need help. Or I appreciate you. Or Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Worst, it should be Worcestershire. No. So if I go to your marketplace and I say it that way, don't correct me. That's what it should Worcestershire. be. Worcestershire. That's what it is? Worcestershire. I believe that's so. how I say it, but I, I could be wrong. Okay. But see, it, it's the perfect addition to this because what this isn't, what we're not talking about is a mispronunciation. We're actually talking about a word that you struggle to even get out or a phrase. I know. Yeah. So, you know that's an easy one? Like if somebody asked me that, I'd be like, oh, that one then you don't have to tackle the other ones. Like that one's the hardest to say. (laughs) You almost have to remove that to get to the re to the essence of that list. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You you do because people will try to be funny with it. Is that what you're saying? You can escape the real question. Yeah. It's an easy out. Anybody struggles with that. Like, oh, yep. Number four. I like it for a reason because Sarah does something cute that sounds like this, but it's not this. So for example, she said, said a word wrong her whole life, yeah. and now the kids say it, and it's really cute. <laughs> so, you know, that thing you lay your head on to go to sleep is mm-hmm. a pillow, and she calls it a pillow. With an E, P-E? It Aww. sounds like it. And so my kids will be like, Dad, is there, I need a new pillow case. <laughs> it's cute. And I, try, I just leave it because it's so cute. But that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about mispronunciation. We're just trying to say, you just can't even get it out. Worst it's your I can't. Sauce. And so Fred is saying, just say the salty Shire sauce. Right. That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> so we're going to make Ron pick what Janelle has the hardest time saying. Is oh. it, oh I love goodness. you, I was wrong, and I'm sorry, I need help, or I appreciate you. What's Janelle's hardest thing, Ron? I need help. Wow, he's trying to be safe. Do, well, do you, I'm, I'm sure she could say, I love you all day long. Oh, yeah. I actually think you're quite good at saying, I appreciate you. I number one, I love you and I appreciate you is natural to me. I need help is not. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Part of my problem. She's a strong woman. That's what it is. (laughs) It's that, which I'm not strong. It's being a firstborn and it's not an excuse. Mm -hmm. It's your, it's just that being a firstborn and taking care of people and kind of having the whole thing of, I got this, I can do this. And that's something I've had to, I'm still trying to grow in. Number two is really where I struggle. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to be honest. And I'll do it eventually. What? And you know what? It's something I want to grow in. 
Like the other ones, I don't have to think about. Poor Len. To say I was wrong and I'm sorry, I have to be intentional. I have to say, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this right now. So it's almost like against, hey. Not I'm to be forward, honest. but you're being honest. So so the two you, you struggle with is I need help and I was wrong and I'm sorry. Sounds kind of bullheaded, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm a Taurus. If we're going to go there. It sounds like a tour. Like, what? what is that animal? Oh, I thought you were talking about the car, the Ford Taurus. I know. Well, you know, <laughs> my husband works for Ford. No, I'm not. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah. What well, about you? No. Uh, actually, no, we're up no, against no. the break. You got to tell me. It's 847. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting a conversation we're going to carry on with you and Brian and Janelle over time on Facebook. It starts at 9.05, also streaming live on YouTube. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. The other day we cold called our spouses. Yeah, it was on. hilarious. Yeah, we put them on blast. But we did tell them, you're on Facebook Live. Can you talk? And my husband said, no. And what did Brian do? I talked anyway. I- <laughs> He didn't really have a choice. I mean, and today, on. you need to like go and subscribe and be ready to go on live because Brian is evading this question. No, no, and no. And so no, we're no, going to no. cut. You're going to answer on air. No, what's happening is I'm just trying to understand. Oh, my goodness. So there's these, it, there's a meme we shared on our Facebook page, which is the topic of discussion. Which phrase is the hardest for you to say? Is it, I love you? I was wrong and I'm sorry. I need help. I appreciate you. Or Worcestershire sauce, <laughs> which is supposed to be funny, but whatever. Okay, so Janelle, I actually was talking to a, a friend of mine the other day who is a a leader. She's a strong woman. Yeah. And when she had to ask for help on something, it brought her to tears. Oh. Ooh. Wow. And it sound and you that's the one of the ones you struggle with. I do. Why why is it hard to say I need help? Um because I feel like I should be able to handle whatever is on my plate, you know? And, like, it, I, I look back and, like, for example, I hardly ever ask for people to watch my kids. And it was the You fear. do have six of them. I but. do. No, but even when I had one, two, three, sure. like, we did not. What it was always a, ba- a babysitter, and we would pay the babysitter. It was afraid of, I already was getting comments of why are you having all these kids or why so close together. And so I wanted to show, I got this. Like, I take care of business. And so when you ask for help, you're depending. And so it kind of gives truth to you can't handle what's on your plate. But it goes further back to being a firstborn. And, you know, you kind of are there for the younger ones. You're there for your mom and and just handling things. We've talked about this with my siblings because my mom told my sisters that, yeah, Janelle, my mom's in the stage where she goes to the house of whoever needs her. Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, Janelle never, she never tells me she needs me. And so obviously I do. But it's that thing of being used to, you like, you already got the younger ones to kind of cover so it's it just spills over to other things. Do you intellectually agree with the concept that act, that asking for help actually is a sign of strength, not weakness? Do you agree with that or not? Delegating is a sign of strength, but help sounds weak. Yeah, I, it just does. Yeah, but I I think it you actually sound weak. Well, what I what I told my friend who was brought to tears by having to ask for help is that I said to her, I said, "Listen, you already have credibility. A high measure of credibility is an effective, intelligent." strong leader. And so when you ask for help, I think I see it as enhancing your credibility. It's a sign of strength, yeah. not a sign of weakness. Yeah. And honestly, it's a step of mentorship often. If you let somebody help you, you're letting them see how you do something so that they can learn from that and be able to do it themselves the next time. Yeah. So why don't you think it's a sign of strength? Asking for help. I think in our society is just looked at as weakness. Like strength is, I got this. And it's, I know I'm wrong, guys. I'm just telling you how, why I struggle. Well, you did it. Did you hear that? <laughs> what? You said you were wrong. Dude, I was going to tell you about that. I don't struggle. I'm going to, we're going to talk about the one I struggle with because you want to make it sound, I know how to say I'm sorry and all that. I'm going to tell you about that later. But with the help thing, that's also why I don't cry. I try not to cry in public because you know why? I why? hate when you cry and then people 
attention turns to you and they try to console you. Like it feels weak. Oh, I just, Sarah's the you know, same and so way. I push people away. Like, no, stop. Like, I'm good. I got this. <laughs> Sarah does the same thing. So it, does she struggle with asking for help? Does oh, it, are yeah. those connected? So why? What do you think it is? Do you think it's a woman thing? No, because I'm the same. Those two that you said, I would oh, say yeah. for me. Those are the same for you, Rob. Same too. So yeah. what is it for you? At um, least? I, because I'm a man, I feel like I should be able to do things. I'm strong. I, you know, at, at work, we've got packages that are kind of heavy mm -hmm. and I kind of pride myself foolishly on, I can lift it up to the upper belt. Well, one day it's going to blow out my back and then I'll be like everybody else hobbling around. Oh, I'm 58. I have a yeah. bad back. And see, to me, I, I see that people can gain significant credibility when they have self-awareness as to what they're good at and what they're not good at. When I encounter somebody who's able to go, I'm good at this and I've got it. Somebody goes, I don't know how to do that. And they mm -hmm. ask for help. I see it as a major source of credibility. Do you, do you agree with that concept? Yes. Yes. Which for whatever reason, I, maybe you disagree with this. I don't think I struggle with asking for help. No, you don't. And, and that's part of where that comes from for me is to go, I actually have more credibility for you, for you. If you say, I don't know how to do this and I need help, or I can't do this alone and I need help. Yeah. And then because it's like, wow, that's that's a measure of humility. And the yes, scriptures actually is. lift up humility as something that is, that is to be admired. And it also, in my experience, helps with connection and building friendships. In the times that I have said, listen, I can't do this. Can you help me? That's an opportunity you give someone. Right. To, yeah. So we're talking with you about which and is here the we go. hardest Brian for you to say. Y'all got to go to YouTube and Facebook. You, oh, Brian. We got a text from Adrian that says, <laughs> and Brian <laughs> just evaded the question again. Oh, I did? That's not good. I haven't even noticed. I've been grinning the last 15 minutes. Have you seen it? Yeah. Get ready. You can register for your chance no, no, to no. win Cedar Hold Point up. tickets. Okay, which one on the list? And then we'll go and you'll explain it on overtime. Which one on the list do you struggle with, Brian? You got... Well, 15 seconds, go. For content, if you just tuned in, we're going to be doing this on Brian and Janelle overtime. <laughs> it's which phrase is hardest for you to say? Mm -hmm. I love you. I was wrong and I'm sorry. I need help. Or I appreciate you. Okay, go ahead. So which Actually, one? the one I struggle with most is the other one. What's the other one? Worcestershire sauce. No, you can't use that. No. Well, Janelle, look at that. We're, <laughs> no. We got to go. JD okay. Greer has to preach. See you live on Facebook or YouTube <laughs> live. And he's going to answer this question. <laughs> so this is the meme we're talking about. Which is hardest for you to say? Kelly's going to put this on here, too, because she's amazing. Is it, I love you? I was wrong and I'm sorry. I need help. I appreciate you, or Worcestershire, wor Worcestershire oh. sauce. No, but we're keeping that one out. Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, I mean, this one's for fun. You don't, that actually doesn't count. You can't pick that. Unless you're me, and then that really is obviously the one I struggle with, because I couldn't <laughs> say it right there. So, just as a recap, if you're listening live, Janelle, what's your struggle again? I struggle with uh, number one. Like all of them. <laughs> I know, right? Not um, number one. You don't struggle no, with, with the you. first one. No, that I struggle with is saying, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I'll say it eventually, but I want to get better at saying it right when it happens. And so, it's, and it's, Len. and it's not, it's usually with Len, to be honest. Oh. Like I love, no, because that's like more complicated problems. Like I love apologizing to my kids. I'll tell them anytime, my friends. It usually shows up in, in marriage Why? issues. The, the problems are more intense. There's more baggage. You know, the kids um, and friends, it's just different kind of relationship. But we were waiting to find out. I already talked enough. What do you struggle with? Well, let's say hello to people here. Wow. Say, we're not going to say hello. Hola, say Jesse. Hola, buenos dias. She says, muchachos, I will get up earlier to listen to you guys. You should. Eva says, hey, guys, can I buy a travel mug? My husband received uh, mugs for both of us, but one was missing the slide for the lid. Uh, well, these are very special limited edition things. We have about two or three hundred of these and we have to, we randomly give them out. They are not for sale. So and if you don't like that idea, it's Janelle, Janelle's fault. <laughs> Just remember that. 
Janelle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Hi, Nathan. Again, uh, which Mike, of these, Janet. The question today, which is the hardest for you to say, and we're eliminating Worcestershire sauce because it's just funny. Is it hardest for you to say, I love you, I was wrong, and I'm sorry, I need help, or I appreciate you? And Janelle has been very annoyed with Brian today. Well, Brian's evading the question. He already said he doesn't struggle with uh, asking for help. So we know that. What do you, do you struggle we let saying guess? I love you? Should we, should we let people guess? Um, yes. Go ahead, guys. Guess. Which one do you think Brian struggles with? It's Kelly. What's up? She says, the older I get, the easier it is to say I'm sorry and the harder to ask for help. Oh, interesting. Janet says, I need help. Mike says, some of those used to be hard for me, but I'm pretty comfortable saying all of them at this point in my life. So we have a few people saying that as you age, all of these become easier. I think that's interesting. Do you think that's true? Yeah, I could see. It used to be harder for me to say I'm sorry. and Because I thought I had it all together <laughs> when I was younger. You still don't think that? Huh? No. Mm. I don't. I wish, actually. Sarah <laughs> says, can I answer? <laughs> That's right. I was actually. Thank you. Oh. Yes. Sarah. I was going to call you, you baby. I was going <laughs> to call you. <laughs> oh because I thought, but it was like, no, she's at work. I need to do it oh once this week. Oh, my goodness. Who is best equipped to answer this question? Oh, my. Sarah. My wife. That's right. My wife. Again, so let's have my wife answer because, Sarah Jean, you'd be, you'd be with Janelle. Wow, he used your middle name. Exasperated. Because I've been evading this one. So, which one is hardest for me to say? Let's see what my wife says. Nathan is on YouTube. What's up, Nathan? Yes, you can go ahead and answer on YouTube. Nathan says, I was wrong. I'm sorry. That's what he struggles with. That one, and you know what? I always say it eventually, but I'm learning more and more that, no, there's a reason why I wait to say it. And so, I'm, I want to grow more and say it. As soon as I know, I'm wrong. Did you see Kinney? Or, or Kinsey, Kinsey says, it can be painfully hard for me to ask for help. Ooh, why? why can you tell that? us why, Kinsey? People struggle with asking for help. My why wife? don't you struggle? Len texted and literally asked that. Why don't you struggle? With asking, asking for, for help? help? Yeah. I've got this awkward thing about me and my personality that I really like to categorize and figure out what I'm good at and what I'm not good at, because what irritates me is people who Stop! Come... Sarah says you struggle <laughs> saying, I was wrong. <laughs> wow. Let it go down in the records that Janelle was courageous enough to put it out there and break it down. You couldn't even say it. No, oh, what, my no, goodness. that's not true. That's not true. Oh, what my was, goodness. What was fun for me? You couldn't even say it. And then she says you have a very hard time admitting when you are wrong. <laughs> what? Oh, Sarah, we gotta go hang out. You my girl. What was real? What I was really doing <laughs> oh all this God. time was seeing how long I could avoid answering the question. No, nope. nope. And enjoying every minute of her nope. squirming about it. You could have ministered to people on air. You could have really blessed people that can't join us. Thank you. You should have been the first one to be like, I'll say what I struggle with. Nope. Hello. So, ladies first. So. Nope. Do you think my wife is right based on your experience working with me? Um, there have been times, seriously speaking, that you have been very good at apologizing, but I think you struggle in the same way I do. In the heat of the moment, you don't say it, and you're stuck on your position. Well, it's and not I, my fault that I'm generally right. No. And I think that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. I think... Just kind of bringing it back to me, just to, because I, I can't speak for you in this. That's what, like, in my relationship with Lynn, that's what I find myself doing. In the heat of the moment, we're so, I'm so stuck on my position. I, I can't, like, bring myself down and really calm down and really say, you know what? I think, you know, you might have a point. It's hard. And so when I calm down and we walk away, then it's easier. But I think what gets me in that quote-unquote heat, it's pride. It's hard to come down when you're in the heat of the discussion. So I'll continue. What is your reason? What are you, why do you struggle? Because you'll do it for, in my experience, marriage is very different. In my experience with you, you'll do it eventually. What is yeah, it? Because 
I love a good debate too much to give up that easily. Is it the love of the debate? That's or is it, pride, is it the course. admittance of... Dang, no, I, no, think I mean, wrong. obviously at the root of it, it's pride. That's obviously at the root of it. Why uh, did you struggle saying it on air? I was having fun with you. No, that's... I, I was literally... I, did, I decided that's when we started this that yeah. I was not going to say what mine was and watch you squirm. Yeah, yeah. Just for fun. And it worked. Wayne says he also struggles with I was wrong. It's not easy. Sandy says, good morning. Asking for help is difficult because I am a strong woman and I used to think no one can do this like I can. Oh, yeah. That is pride. I have gotten much better at asking for help, but also I am 75 years old now. Never too late to learn. That's the truth. I love that spirit, Sandy. That actually is very encouraging to me because it's we should be constantly growing. Kathy says, yes, your wife knows you best. Yeah, in fact, my wife, as you would notice, my <laughs> lovely wife, Sarah, who I love so much, she's very astute. She's correct on her assessment. She hasn't listed which one she struggles with the most. No, hmm. she, can I guess? Hmm. Can I guess? Uh, go ahead. Be, well, you said, and I think she's a strong woman and she's smart, and uh, I can uh, understand. Well, officially, I've said she doesn't struggle with any of these. <laughs> no, no, no. I know. But I can relate with her. And I, it wouldn't surprise me if she says asking for help is difficult for her. But not that, I mean, it's just only because I can relate about women. And when you feel like, yo, I got this, it's hard sometimes. So Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong. Kinsey says, I feel judged at work. I'm a firefighter, paramedic, when I need to ask for help just because I'm a smaller female. I can understand that. Uh, I years, decades ago, was an engineer and I interned and I can understand in certain environments where you work with men, you got to prove like you know what the heck you're doing because you lose credibility. Is that wrong? Forget ministry, in corporate. Do you think that's valid for women to feel that? I understand people's hesitancy to do that early on in mm -hmm. the in the phase of, of career that I've been told is the credibility building phase. When you're first in an organization, you want to show people that you're credible so that you can do things. And so I understand the hesitancy in that phase of career. But once you've established your credibility in an organization, pride keeps you from asking for help. Because I think asking for help actually builds credibility. Why? Can you break that down? Why? Builds credibility asking for help? Because people value humility as an attribute, don't they? Yeah. I mean, scriptures value humility. Yeah. No doubt about it. And that being the case... When someone can ask for help, they're actually exemplifying humility. And that's an attractive thing about someone. So in what I explained to you as a woman, when I was growing my family, um, there are other women in, in this situation or men who want to who wanna come off like, yo, I can take care of my family. I got this. Isn't it true? Or how do you fight the feelings of, if I ask for help, then it's showing that I can't handle what's on my plate? You know? Like, how does it not show that? I can think of people right now that if I would have been like, oh, can you watch the kids well, or whatever, it would have been like, I told you, you got but, too many kids. You no, know, it does show that because you can't. Right? But we're supposed to handle. Like, we're supposed to... It doesn't... Yeah, I know. I'm just... By or maybe way, people read us wrong. My, my wife answered the question because she's amazing. Best wife in the whole world, ladies and gentlemen. My beautiful wife, Sarah. She struggles as well. She thinks you're right. That she struggles with yeah, it's hard. asking for help. Because she's a strong woman and yeah. she is good at a lot of things. I'll give yeah. her that. I don't think she struggles with any of them, though. She's great. She's awesome. She's great. Carlton, love when you come. He says, I really don't ask for help. I'm so used to doing it myself because when I did ask for help, it was cricket. So I just do it myself. A lot Suzanne of struggle with that one. Yeah. Len struggles with that big time. But he's the first one like Carlton, I think he says. Oh no. Um, Len's the first one to help other people all day long and sacrifices sleep for it. Um yeah, so I don't know. Look at Martha's, Suzanne. Suzanne's the oh, first one. Suzanne says, I have a hard time telling my husband I appreciate him. I'm glad you're talking about this today so I can remind myself to tell him this and give him words of affirmation. Could that be, because you said Sarah struggles with it. Like, some people don't express, like, they don't, you've said this on air, so I'm, right? You said, like, because your words of affirmation. It's my, it's my love language. And, and there's nothing wrong with her. It could just be some people just don't get that. Well, because it doesn't, 
it doesn't mean much to her. Yeah. Like if you tell Sarah you're proud of her or she did a great job on something, she'll be like, okay. I mean, she just doesn't feel, that's not how she gets value or feel, feels love. So for Suzanne, it could just be that. Like, it could be. Yeah. But again, I think for some people, showing appreciation for someone else is, is akin to admitting you need them yeah. and therefore need help. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if the struggle to say I need help would have a close second of I appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't it? Yeah. Do you struggle in that sense? Like, do you, do you struggle to appreciate Len? Um, no, I text him a lot and tell him specifically in ways that I appreciate him. The area where I want to grow in is telling him I appreciate him in areas where I don't really need it. You know, like what I really need is time and conversation and whatever. The way he shows his love is other ways. So I try, I'm trying to train myself to recognize those things he does and say, I love that you do this. Like, for example, if you told Sarah constantly words of affirmation, she could easily miss it because she doesn't need it. She doesn't need it, yeah. So I need so to recognize that he's doing it for a reason. He's expressing love. So I don't You've know if You've talked that, about that a lot. I think that's yeah, true. So, Where we need to begin. We don't just need to expect our someone in our life to just give us our love language. We have to recognize when they're showing their stories. Yeah, us. and show appreciation. Did you see Robert's that. comment? You've passed it. Second. Oh, yeah. Robert. What? The right there. <laughs> Robert, I have a problem admitting I was wrong thinking Brian was right. <laughs> the agony. I know. I know. I struggle with that too. Amora says, do you shame or feel hidden shame for people when they ask for help? Uh, me? No. Uh, again, I I think <laughs> it gains credit. It helps people gain credibility. To because for asking for help is true humility. It's you saying, I can't do this alone. I need you. Please help me. That's humility. It is. Right? It is. But do you realize, because I think about in my family, asking for help is hard. Um, I don't know. You're looking for a reason to not have to ask for help. Maybe because I'm used to it. Like with the kids, if you don't ask for, like you can manage. You can manage and figure it out. You but know, see, I bet you, you all... ask the kids for help all day long. Oh, yeah, they need to help me. But all it... day long. Like, get me water, get me my charger. And then Giselle loves it because she's like, you got so many kids, you can rotate them. <laughs> but see, but yeah, you don't struggle different. to ask for help from people outside of your family. Yeah. Which, why I... is that? I don't struggle to ask out. I'm sorry. You do struggle to oh, ask for yeah, help for people outside yeah, yeah. your family. I said that wrong. Because I, I feel like they don't owe me. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Carlton Do you see, I'm... I just did it. <laughs> Carlton says, I tried that and it didn't work on several occasions. Huh. Amora says, yes, but does everyone do that? Many times in the workplace, that is not always the case. Again, I think... Uh, th there is a time in the workplace for me when, when someone asks for help, I am suspect. And that is when I don't know them well and I haven't seen their work. Oh. I start to go, do they really need help or are they lazy? Yeah. Yeah. But again, I think once you've established credibility in any sort of relationship, asking for help shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Are they lazy or are they capable, which is what somebody's comment was when you're a woman and you work with a bunch of men. Yeah, fun. It's true, though. Come on. It's true. I don't care. It's true. So, thank you. <laughs> she does that when she's annoyed with me. She makes a statement, assumes I agree, and just says thanks. And I'm right. And you're welcome for... You like, do that to Len? No. <laughs> I don't. Yvonne says, on YouTube, make sure you comment on YouTube. We're watching you. Yvonne says, good morning. I think asking for help was the hardest until I really did. It humbled me. So God's grace is there when we walk in humility. Even Jesus needed help carrying the cross. Wow, good point, Yvonne. Wow. That's our godmother Sarah right Sarah on it? YouTube says, I need help. That's what she struggles with. I think that is obviously the common one. I need help? What do you think that is? Do you think that's a American culture thing? Like, I, we got it. Like, we're supposed to be like, no, I got this. This is my thing. Yeah. I got it. I'm I taking think that, care could, of business. that could absolutely be a product of American individualism. 
because I'm from Dominican Republic, and over uh, there... Yeah, I mean, technically you are, but I you're was, really from Rhode Island. Go ahead. I was... Bo- That's so offensive. No. You were three when you I moved to Rhode Island. I was born in DR. My first language is Spanish. My family's in DR. I can't believe I'm explaining this. But what I was going to say is that in Dominican Republic, having, like, asking for help with kids or asking for help in the home, it's very communal. Like, living and... And aunts, uncles, and, fa- and neighbors. So I do, I can see how here, I've kind of, because I got here when I was three, I've adopted that. Where, sure. like, you got to take care of business. you got to show that you can handle what you got. And if you're asking for help, then that means you're being dependent. And dependence, it, am I exaggerating to say that in our culture, is looked down on? Yeah, I think it is. Although I've had... It's the I, I think you know what's scary is trying to truly examine what you're good at and what you need help with, what you're not good at. The closer you look, the less you're good at. Oh, wow. I agree with that, though. I mean, we're only really good at, like, two things, maybe. And it's a scary re- realization, but I think there's freedom in acknowledging it because then you know when you legitimately do need to ask for help. Yeah. Are you um, obligated, for want of a better word, to give back, you used an example on help you've used. Like, do you feel obligated to like, man, I gotta make sure I find a way to help that person back? When you're in a relationship, no. Cause then it feels like you're using people. No, like I, it's hard to explain, but one of the better examples is my neighbor. Yeah. That dude is a giver. He is so helpful and I'll ask him for help without hesitation. Yeah. And even though I know the scales are unbalanced, he's done more for me than I've done for him, I know that he's not afraid to ask me for things if he needs them. Oh, and yeah. I'll bend over backwards to do it for him. And I feel yeah. like it's all going to work itself out. Yeah. In in real, like, good relationship, whether it's friendship or whatever, you can trust it even itself out. Yeah. With that mutual respect. If you know your heart that you're not trying to use, you're just asking because you need help. Jesse says, it's very common in Mexico, too, asking for help from family. It's normal and it's not bad. Carlton says, not necessarily. People have a way of making you feel bad if you ask for help. They do. Or they will bring it up more times than you want, that they helped you. That's annoying. And those are, I think, generally Carlton as well. Those are like messed up people that are holding that against you that you asked for help. Um that's what I would say. Deborah says, yes, asking for help may make us feel weak, incapable. It is an act of humility. We are proud people. Yeah. So this tends to be hard for people to. By the way, for clarity's sake, notice that in this discussion, I've proven I'm working on saying I was wrong. Because I was wrong in the way I phrased something for, remember? <laughs> okay. So it was wrong and I'm sorry. How have you demonstrated that you need help? Go ahead. That I need help? Uh... <laughs> You haven't. That's the answer. In this conversation? In this conversation? Yeah. We need help with. Go ahead. She doesn't even know. She's got it all figured out. I ask for help all the time. What do you need help? I'll help you. What do you need? <laughs> you said I'll help you. I'll, I'll help you with something. What do you need help with right now? Go ahead. Maybe in the, maybe today. What do you need help with? I ta- oh, taking my whoa, stuff back to- whoa, whoa. <laughs> I do! Taking my stuff back to the car. I have too much stuff. And then I was spilling stuff Oh, in I the can car. help you with that. I thought you were going to ask me to, like, really do something here. Oh, that's hilarious. I've got time to take your kids anywhere today. Sandy says, asking for help suggests a sign of weakness for us. Oh, yeah. Eva says, I feel like if I can't obtain it on my own, I don't need it. I don't want to put myself in a position where I need something that I have to rely on others. See, that's real right there. I don't want to be let down, and I don't want to put pressure. That's real right there. So explain why she's wrong. Um, no, I, I think that's a legitimate thing, that people are so averse to asking for help that they just only do things they can do. But I just think more than anything else, you're missing out. On what? On when you show others that you need them, they will reciprocate. And it's wonderful to help people. But you inconvenience people. And then the more you do that, the, the more they'll, they'll reciprocate in real relationship. Yeah. Doesn't it feel good to help somebody? It feels good, but to, to burden someone with your... Like, there are times... It's not a burden. 
It is a burden. It's not a it's burden to my thing. neighbor Bill to help me with my car. Okay, that's one thing. But it is, a, like, don't you feel, like, to ask somebody, oh, can you watch my kids? I gotta go do something, something, whatever. You know, I picture people, like, oh, my gosh, can you imagine? And, like, oh, do, do you know what I think lot. the problem is? Is there's people who abuse asking for help. They ask yeah. for help when they don't need it. Yeah. If you actually ask for help when you actually need that's help. That's true, Yeah. Then I don't. Th I think you'll yeah. experience the joy of it. You see what my wife wrote? Ask for help dealing with Brian. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my goodness! Isn't that the truth? She was over here watching me do this to you. <laughs> you know, Sarah gives me Sarah gives me help. <laughs> she gives me help every once in a while during the show. She'll text me, and she'll like let me know that she understands how difficult it is dealing with you. And that is so relieving because sometimes I think I'm crazy. And she'll be like, dude, like. No, she loves me. No, she, she me. knows that. She probably, she probably finds this very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany says, there's a difference between asking for help and taking advantage. Your yes. mom is here. Yeah. What does your mom struggle with? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing at all. Uh, oh, my yeah, goodness. Th there is a difference between asking for help and taking advantage. Yeah. The, like when you legitimately need help, you yeah. should be free to do it. But I think what people have an aversion to is like going, I need to get better asking for help. So Brian, randomly watch my kids. I don't need you to, but please do that now. There are times where it's like, okay, if I do it, it will be difficult. If you help me, it will be easier. Let's say with the kids, you know? And so when you're like, okay, then I can do it. It will just be more difficult. Do you see what I'm saying? There are times where, and that's, like, let's say carrying extra stuff where somebody could say, I can help you. And you're like, no, I got it, I got it. And then you look all stressed. You know, because you're like, if I really had to, I can do this. That's where you slowly live a life where you're, like, overburdened doing everything. Because you're like, if I really tried, I can do this. But perhaps it is really distinguishing what actual need is. Yeah. Like you're, you're describing a lot of situations where they just don't need anything. Give me an example. Like, it'd be easier to go to the store if you took two of my kids. Is that a need? No, there was a That's time a that I watched one of your little boys Yeah. because you had to go somewhere. And you said, I can take him, but it would be easier if you watched him. I said that? Yeah. It was somewhere you were going to go with Grace at school. Uh... Yeah, I, th that it wasn't was really impossible. close to this. Well, and that's where I would have said, which is wrong. Interesting. Oh, I'll just take him. You know, because I would have thought if I ask Devana, it's like, dude, like I could, I could just, you know. Interesting. Yeah, because you're you're right on that. I was wrong. I'm sorry. But that's good. Did your you see mom what I just did? <laughs> did you mom, see? Oh my gosh. Again. You did it. Do you appreciate me? You're modeling what I'm saying, where it's like, it's okay. Like, that's living in community. But here's what I felt okay doing, if I'm going to analyze that. I hadn't ever asked you to watch one of my kids before. Mm -hmm. I'd exhausted every other option I had for not taking one of my kids to, I think it was conferences or something. Oh, it was yeah. a doctor's appointment that was serious for one of my oh, kids or something. It was, no, it was like something at a school. Yeah, it was like Stop a school event. trying to make it serious. It was like, a, no, it was something that I needed to focus on with an older yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah. And he, he would have totally distracted me being there, like, yeah, yeah, my, yeah. Like my little guy. And so since I'd never asked for help before, I exhausted every other option, I really thought this would be best to not have him with me. Yeah. I asked you for help. Yeah. Jack Epperson says, it's not always about hard, difficult. Thank you. Mostly it's about remembering to say those things in the moment. Yeah. Sandy says, your mom, sometimes it's kind to let someone help you. Oh, that's nice. When someone genuinely wants to help, we should let him. Yeah. And as a friend. My mom is right. As a friend, to have you ask me, it did feel like it increased the intimacy in our friendship. Because mm -hmm. it was like, that's cool that you felt comfortable asking me. And I think that's what we steal from relationships. So you're saying I'm good at that? That was good, and it helped me. No, no, you said I'm good at asking for help, is what you <laughs> yeah, said. You are very good at asking for help, actually. You have trouble with appreciating me. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> goodness. Sandy said, your mom says, love you too. Both of us. She Thank has to you. say that because you're saying No, your mom is cool. She loves me more. No, so. whatever. All right, we better Wait, get out Wait, I got to say hi to people. And I want to say hi to Lisa on YouTube. She says, good morning to Janelle, Brian, Ron, and Kelly. Hi, Sarah on YouTube, Yvonne on YouTube. She asked me a question. You don't like questions for me? Nah. 
Oh, where is Brian in the birth order in his family growing up? This will not surprise you. Go. What is that supposed to mean? Because I'm the oldest and like And so we you're got annoying and you try to act like you're in charge all the time. <laughs> I'm the youngest, so I'm the really youngest. Fun to be with, interesting, exciting, and don't kind do of nothing. Improvisational. Got <laughs> yeah. Great combination for a morning show, actually. Is it? <laughs> Carlton says, I didn't ask for help when my mother died. I planned everything because I didn't want to ask people. And then they forget. I don't like that because when people ask me for help, I try to go above and beyond. So yeah. it's the areas that we, it's good to identify and then we'll get better at. Yeah. And thank you, Rob and Jesse, Giselle. Thank you for joining us. Thank Giselle, you as well. I'm your favorite. Giselle, we I'm all know. Your favorite. We all know Giselle that you don't struggle with any of these. Special <laughs> thanks to my wife, who showed up in here. She's the best. She knows it, um, and she even pretended to have a weakness for us all today. Wasn't that nice? You're awesome, Sarah. Thank you for your support. Subscribe to YouTube. Share the Facebook feed. It helps. Helps out. Make sure to share. Share. Subscribe. All right, we out. Hey, hold up. Where are you going? You know you liked your time with us. You want more. So look down, hit that button right there, subscribe, and you'll get updated episodes and then you can hang some more. And guess what? You can help us. How? A five-star rating. You can also hang with us live weekday 6 to 9 a.m. Interact with us, talk with us. Download the Moody Radio app. Or at brianandjanelle.org. And we don't put all this together all by ourselves. There's some great people behind all this production. We want to thank Ron Eastwood, Kelly Ryder, Paul Carter, Doug Hayner, Mike Reynolds, and our awesome and fearless leader, Josue Villa. And finally, this podcast is a production of Moody Radio in Cleveland, a ministry of Moody Bible Institute. Well, Brian, that's a wrap. Yep.